Hi, I'm going to show you how to do texture painting in an extremely easy way. I'm going to use Cycles Render, of course, as everybody should these days. I'm going to delete the default cube and replace it with the monkey. And then I'm going to go straight away into texture painting which of course I can't do straight away because I haven't unwrapped to create a UV image but I'm getting some help with that right here this is why this method is so fast I'll open a UV editor to show you what's going on and also because I have to unfortunately so I'm going to take this uh, invitation here to add some UVs it says add cube map UVs on mesh. I think this is actually going to give a better result than the so-called smart project option which is somewhere else on the smart project option to view view fit to see this better. On the smart project option I don't think you would see so clearly the, the face of the monkey is recognizable there and here we can see some some eyes for example white part of the eye here, black part of the eye here, and so on. But basically this UV image is, is too fragmented to be very useful. You don't want to be painting on it. You want to do all your painting over here. So I'll shrink that a little bit. And we also had this invitation here we're told missing materials, but I can add a paint slot here rather easily. And we can see that happening better if I choose materials here. And we can see the monkey head has no slots here so I'm expecting when we click here that we're going to get a paint slot. Diffuse color, black is pretty terrible color to choose because you just can't see any any shape within the monkey head if you choose black initially so much better to choose uh, some other color and in the case of monkey head presumably uh, dark brown would be uh, if you want to make a realistic monkey not that Suzanne has a realistic monkey head shape, but anyway, I'm going to go with uh, dark brown here. You notice the name of the material, material 001 diffuse color. Okay, so we've got the brown color of the monkey here, and we can actually start painting already. Um, but before we do that, well, just to prove it, we can start painting already, which is, of course, extremely quick. But uh, you probably want to do painting symmetrically on the monkey and uh, you can do that in different ways. I suppose the classic way is to delete half the monkey head and use a mirror modifier and so on, but it's much easier than that if you're just doing UV painting like this because we have an option down here of um, symmetry. So if I choose symmetry, of course that'll be along the X direction now if I paint you'll see that the painting automatically is symmetrical which is extremely useful. As I paint here you can see that the thickness of the lines isn't constant. You might think it should be because it says here radius 35 pixels but actually it depends on the, the zoom that you have. If I zoom out, I get a really thick line with soft edges. And if I zoom in, I get lines that are much thinner and also more intense. And if I zoom in too much, at some point, like now, I can't draw on that surface anymore. So there are limits to that. And uh, while I'm thinking about these lines that are soft edged. Let me show you how to get a hard edged paintbrush if you want one. You can do that down here by changing the curve and maybe you understand this curve is going to give us uh, a soft edge and this staple shape here looks like it might give us a harder edge which we can certainly see here. Of course I think the soft edge one is probably the one that you would want to use most of the time. There are other options to try also. You can change colors, of course. And everything is Yankee Doodle so far. So you could just continue like that, and uh, that's it in f four minutes. Uh, we've got, uh, got going, of course. It's not quite the whole story because. Uh, 
when we look to see what we've really got in the render, we haven't got any colors at all. Um, so a bit more work still to do. Um, what about material? In material, we don't seem to see the, the colors either. So what's, what's, what's missing? What's missing is that we haven't actually created a, an image here. So we're going to have to do that at some point. Uh, actually, I think we do have an image, but it's not uh, it's not been chosen yet. We made it earlier. It's called Material 001. So when I choose that and also do View Fit again, we can see that we've got our paint starting to appear here, but we still don't see anything over on this side. I think I chose Material, didn't I? What about Texture? On well, Texture we can see it, but we still don't see it in Render, I believe. No, it's still looking grey there. So we still have a bit of more work to, to do. You have to understand that you could have several images uh, open simultaneously here in the UV image editor and therefore Blender needs to know which one do we want to use on the monkey. So that's done over here. We're not using a plain color of course. That's the, or the white color that you see over here so far. In the, in the render view, we need to click here and tell the computer that we're going to be using an image texture. And still not right with this pink color. The pink color tells us that we haven't yet selected our image. So I also need to go in here and say, use that particular material. So now you can see it is working in the render view. You can just keep painting and that'll be it. But it's Blender Cycles, and Blender Cycles always by default gives this terrible dim lighting, so uh, we need to do that before we have something uh, satisfactory to look at. Perhaps I'll go to back to Material View to fix that, and we've got one lamp only, of course, apparently too dim. We'll see it best from above. Press 7 on the number pad and 5 for the orthogonal view. There's my one lamp. It's too far away. It's too dim. I probably need to be in object view to duplicate this lamp and move it, pulling in the white circle. This will be my backlighting. Classic lighting setup is three lamps, one behind, two in front. Shift D, duplicate the lamp. This, we can say, might be our main lamp here. Let's make it bright already. Use nodes, change the strength, say, up to 2000. And that will give very severe shadows. So with Shift D, we need to duplicate that again. And this will be the fill light that fills in the, the shadows, makes the shadows softer. We'll give that a strength of uh, 1000. And I didn't yet change the strength of the backlight. Yep, it didn't accept the 1000 because I didn't press Enter. 1000, Enter. Choose the backlight, give that some more brightness also. Let's put that one at, say, 2000. Um, we're looking from the top now, but of course you need to look in two different directions to see where the lamps really are in three-dimensional space. So I'm going to the front view and we can see the lamps are really high compared to the monkey. So I'll move all three lamps down together all at once. You could select them with shift right click or border select. For example, I'm moving the lamps way, way down and that will of course give a brighter effect when we do the, the render or render view. And that's it. I've given you the basic idea of 3D painting. You may realize that we could have problems, for example, painting the, the say, the whites of the eyes because we'd be painting probably accidentally painting on these other faces as well. Very difficult also to paint like black here and white on the, the, the whites of the eyes. There is a solution for that though and you can solve that problem by, let's go back to material and I'm going to choose this monkey then and go into edit mode so we can choose the faces that we're interested in. And press A to select nothing and in face select mode if I do alt right click I can choose a kind of a ring of surfaces here and that's what I wanted to apply the white material to 
I made another video where I created a separate slot and a separate uh, material for that. But you can do it all neatly here in the uh, texture painting as well. If I go back to texture paint, you can see we have this option here. This one right here says uh, face selection masking. So if I turn that on, it means I'm only going to be painting on the faces that I selected earlier. And this is going to be the whites of the eyes, so something like this. And I'm hoping when I paint here, of course you still have to be a bit careful because you're only painting on what you what you can see. So it's not like uh, when you color faces the, the other way. And we can also see that the um, Suzanne is actually really badly made because you can poking out here the assumption is that you'll do a, a subsurf modifier on this and then that problem there will disappear otherwise you need to press the eye back a little bit. I've only done one eye and you can see that we didn't get the XY symmetry here because I'm because I made that selection and I only selected one eye. So do I now have to select the other eye carefully? Well you could go back to edit mode where we had this eye selected and I noticed there's a possibility here of if you have a symmetrical object you can actually choose mirror here without using a mirror modifier and now we've selected the, the white of the other eye which we can now easily color in white as well of course going around several times because the intensity of the white color wasn't super strong ah we have a little problem there uh, I guess that's coming from the the um, mirror of the selection not working perfectly perhaps again because the Suzanne model isn't perfectly made so I need to go back and select those uh, those two faces that I missed before I can paint them too you can do then the, the same idea with um, with the blacks of the eyes and perhaps you want to color the nose that way and the lips that way and so on and so on I won't uh, continue with that the now though. One very important thing that I need to mention before we finish, as you probably already know about UV images, is that if I were to save the blend file now, I'd lose this, this image. So you need to be careful to either save that as a separate image, which you can do here. The reason to save it as a separate image file is that you might want to open it up as a PNG or JPEG or whatever in a separate program like the GIMP or Photoshop or something, do more work on it. And uh, normally though I think uh, as a, something of a beginner, which I'm assuming you are, um, you probably want to go the easy way, the simple way, and that is to incorporate this image into the blend file, which is called packing. Not too sure of the difference between these two. I usually choose pack as PNG. Uh, we notice the asterisk down there, by the way, which says that we have unsaved changes or unpacked changes. And now that asterisk has gone away because this image has been packed into the blend file. If I save the blend file now, this image will not have been lost. But if you continue painting, of course, that means you've modified the image again and you have to do pack or save um, after making your last modifications to, to the image. Otherwise, any modifications that you make to the image that you don't save or pack, they are going to be lost. Uh, of course, my, my my painting exercise here is not finished, but you understand what you've got to do in order to make a, a beautiful version of Suzanne of your own. Let's just do a F12 uh, render to see what I've got. But I only did a couple of brush strokes, so it's not going to be very nice. At least the intensity of the uh, of the lighting is correct. That's pretty small Suzanne head. Uh, course the best way to fix that problem and to move the camera is to do zero for the camera view and to get what I call the end panel. In the end panel we have something called lock camera to view and this is certainly the easiest way of placing a, 
I'm in texture paint, I think I need to be outside of that. Perhaps I need to be in edit mode. That's it. Now I can move uh, just using using your regular navigation skills of uh, panning and zooming and orbiting. You can fit that to the the camera view very uh, very neatly, I guess. And don't forget to turn that off when you finished placing the the camera. And now the F12 render should look nicer. I hope that was helpful to you. Good luck with your own painting and I have got other videos about UV painting which are longer and maybe more more precise with more control, manual unwrapping and, and so on. Actually before I go let me show you what this same image looks like if I apply the subsurf modifier as you probably will want to do yourself to smooth off this this uh, this model so I press uh, F11 to hide the rendered image and the monkey head is selected of course so I can go into my modifiers and uh, choose the subdivision surface or subsurf modifier and press N to hide the end panel, shrink this. Now we're looking at uh, the same monkey with the subsurf modifier turned on. Note that notice how the problem with the eye has fixed itself. This is uh, what the same thing looks like in the render viewport shading. That's it then. Bye.